There's over 600 different pieces of equipment in Warframe, and the vast majority of them can be accessed through the arsenal. Let's go over that. Heads up everybody, my name is Sentinel Grey, and welcome to the channel. Welcome to part 3 of your beginner's guide to Warframe. Today I'll be going over your arsenal and the many things surrounding it, but before I do that, I do have a few disclaimers. First being is I will not be going over mods. Part 4 in this series is dedicated to that specifically, so no reason to talk about that here. And the second thing is, everything that I'm going to go over in this is under the assumption that you have not completed the second dream quest yet, since this guide is for beginners. So there will be a whole entire section of the arsenal that I will be skipping. Now looking at your arsenal, you'll see that you have a few tabs at the top of your menu that you have on the left side of your screen. I'll be going over those individually, along with everything in them. So the first tab is all about your equipment you have on you at almost all times. This is your Warframe, your primary weapon, secondary weapon, and melee weapon, along with your little hidden blade thing called a Parazon. Starting at the top with your Warframes, there's over 40 different types of Warframes, each with their own abilities, uses, and actually themes as well. So if you like playing a Necromancer, a Dragonborn, or a Druid in other games, you'll feel right at home with some of the frames that you have to pick from. Hovering over the Warframe section will give you four options. Equip, Upgrade, Appearance, and Abilities. Whenever you go to equip your frame, you'll notice that it not only shows all of the frames that you own, but all of the ones that you don't as well. That doesn't mean that these frames are available to you. It just means that you can buy them from the market with the in-game currency Platinum. With Plat, you could totally skip the whole process of farming for blueprints and materials to just have the frame immediately in your inventory. Like I've said previously in this guide series though, Warframe is not a pay to win game and is more of a pay for convenience. While buying frames outright totally gets rid of the grind required for it, it doesn't however get rid of the leveling grind you need to do. As you level a Warframe, it's a little bit different from leveling anything else in the game. At the base, unranked level of a Warframe, you only have access to the Warframe's first ability. When you level up your frame, you slowly unlock the other abilities and improve their strength all the way up to a max of level 3 for each ability. When you start to play this game for a while, this whole process and leveling up of abilities becomes something you don't even think about. Eventually, you'll find methods to level your frames, weapons, and gear so quickly that you won't even realize that in one mission you entered in with an unranked item and left with that same item at level 26. Which means, most of the time, all you'll worry about is how quickly you can get to max rank out of a piece of gear. The upgrade section we're going to skip over since this requires us to talk about mods, and like I said, I'm not covering that until my next video, so just bear with me here. Moving down to appearance, you'll notice that you have a ton of different options. You could change the color of your frame, give them armor pieces, a cape type thing called a sandana, and even add an effect to your frame as you walk around. Just for the colors themselves, Warframe has a huge amount of shades and variants of almost literally any color that you can think of. The only downside to this is that the game starts you out with a very restricted palette. I think in total you only have like 10 colors to pick from without buying any palettes, and if you want new palettes, you have to spend platinum to do so. There is a bright side to this though. While you can customize every individual color on your frame, you can also randomize the colors. When starting out as a new player, you can get some colors that you don't even have access to through the random option, then from there change the colors how you want to have them. Another bright side is that the color palettes are something that the game sometimes almost gives away for free during certain events like Valentine's Day or St. Patrick's Day. More often than not, you can buy the specific color palette for just a single credit in the market whenever those events are around. As for the armor you can decorate your Warframe with, there are a pretty good number of options. And yes, you heard me right, decorate. These armor pieces are exclusively for show and give you absolutely no benefits when it comes to combat or gameplay as a whole, but they sure as hell look cool. Just keep that in mind if you want to make the most slender frame into a broad ass shoulders type of frame, you can do that and have it not mess with any of your stats. Just like the color palettes, a lot of these armor pieces and sets you have to buy with platinum. Now I said a word before that you're probably wondering what it was, Sandana. Yeah, I had no idea what these were either whenever I first played. These are basically different 
capes and back accessories for your warframes that just like the armor pieces they don't give you any gameplay value any stat increase or anything like that they're just for show and yes just like the armor pieces and color palettes you have to get them with platinum i'm sure you're catching on to it by now but a lot of warframe can deal with what the player base calls fashion frame there's players who have a different look for any frame depending on the build or what activity they're doing or even on the holiday i've seen that before too a lot of the time this is an end game activity that you can sink time into but if you want a fashion frame right out the gate you absolutely can you just have to spend a little money to do so and one last thing about fashion frame as you look through the different types of warframe skins armor pieces and sandanas you might notice that some of them cost actual money as opposed to plat instead you might see like 499 or something like that whatever your local currency is this is all because these items are all fan made by community members the developers of warframe are very in touch with the art side of their community and often work together with artists in the community to create items that players can buy for actual money doing this is a 50 50 split having half of the proceeds go to the devs and the other half going to, right to the artist who created them Personally, I find this to be extremely heartwarming to find the dev support the part of their community this way. Finally, I want to move on to Warframe stats, and this is going to be a lot easier if we go into the upgrade menu for this, but remember, no mod talk yet. Warframe stats are pretty straightforward. Hell, if you hover over them in the, war in the upgrade menu, you'll see. Armor is how much damage is reduced to your Warframe's health, and only health. Energy is what is used to cast your abilities. Health is obvious, but once you lose all your health, you go into a bleed out phase instead of just straight up die, which is nice. Shields are resistant to most damage and is obviously a shield before your health starts to take damage. Sprint speed is how fast your Warframe can move while sprinting. Duration increases how long your sustained abilities last and often determine how much energy is drained per second. Efficiency is how much your ability initially costs to activate. A higher efficiency means a lower energy cost. Range is how far your ability can stretch and the distance of the area of effect it has. And strength is straight up how powerful your ability is. Could determine healing, damage reduction, or even damage dealt. Keep in mind that every Warframe is different. There are some frames that have no shields at all and have an outrageous amount of health and armor stats and some are the opposite some don't even have energy at all it all depends on the frame but remember to take a look at these whenever you choose to play a different frame now let's move on to your primary weapons overall primary weapons are your normal rifle type weapons that you find in any game assault rifles sniper rifles shotguns those types of things however there's also flamethrowers uh cannons that look like they've been ripped off straight from a pirate ship and even a gun that can shoot out circular saw blades most of these you can find in the market and either buy them for straight up plat or you can just buy the blueprint for a few thousand credits so you can grind out the materials and build it later usually in the early game primaries are very direct in what they do as an example the Bratton is an auto rifle just a straight up auto rifle without any gimmicks and the ignis is just a flamethrower without any gimmicks they do what you expect them to do however some weapons have an alternative firing mode as an example the zenith in its primary function is just a normal auto rifle and it acts like it however with the alternate fire it ejects a floating disc out of the front of the weapon that highlights targets through walls while the disc is out the weapon fires in semi-automatic mode and has increased damage not only that but the gun can shoot through literally anything in the entire game no matter how far or how much is put in front of the bullet it's insane to be fair not all guns are that level of epic but what i'm getting at is some weapons have different modes that you can switch to that completely change how the gun acts secondary weapons are similar to primaries you have your normal types of weapons like throwing knives pistols and revolvers and then you have a microwave gun that can chain damage to like two other em enemies you could find these weapons in the market the same way with primary primaries and you can buy them either outright with plat or buy the blueprints to grind out later the choice ultimately falls to you though the chance for a secondary to have an alternate firing mode is a bit more rare than a primary it can still happen Finally, melee weapons are exactly what you'd expect. 
swords, daggers, broadswords, mauls, bow staffs, and even a sword and shield combo if you want it. On the other end of the spectrum, we have gun blades, whips, scythes, and even nunchucks. So, almost any type of melee weapon fantasy that you have, you can pretty much live it out. And just like your firearm type weapons, some melee weapons have unique things that they can do, like the Vitrica being able to turn your enemies into glass so you can shatter them where they stand. And once again, some of these weapons you can buy in the store for platinum straight up, or you can buy the blueprints. You kind of really getting on how platinum and Warframe is really a pay for convenience type thing. Yeah. All of these weapons, no matter what they are, have the capacity to be cosmetically customizable. You can make custom color combinations to match certain frames or builds or even buy skins for some of the weapons that are able to have them. This is another big part of the whole fashion frame thing too. If you can have your frames be as expressive as you want them to be, then you can channel that into your weapons as well. The last thing that I want to talk about weapons, and this is for weapons overall, is about weapon stats, because I think this is very important. The two stats that I want to look at are crit chance and status chance. Crit chance might be a little different than what you're used to in some other games. While, yes, you do more damage with a headshot, crit chance is just overall your chance of hitting a crit, regardless on if it's a headshot or a body shot. And this is then multiplied, your damage is multiplied by the crit damage multiplier. The reason this is important is because if you have enough high enough crit chance, you can double or even triple your crit chance multiplier. As an example, there are three different types of critical hits and they are displayed as three different types of colored damage numbers. Yellow crits are the more common ones you'll see then followed by orange and then finally red crits. At any crit chance below 100, you have that percentile chance of landing a crit per shot and getting that yellow number. On anything higher than 100%, you are always guaranteed to see yellow damage numbers. But the extra 100 plus, whatever, like say if, if it's 125%, you have a 25% chance to hit orange crit numbers and then so on and so forth, if you get what I mean up until you get your red crits. I understand how that works. There are much better ways to explain it out there, like in the forums and different resource sites, but I thought it is important to know about crit chance. And if you see like, oh man, yellow numbers, what was, th was that a red number? Yeah, the, those, that's uh, high crit chance. Just wanted to let you know. Status chance works a little bit differently. For status chance, it goes over how likely the enemy is going to be affected by the different types of damage you deal. To make this easier, I'm only going to talk about the, oh, the three and only three different types of physical damage there are. If an enemy gets a status on it for the impact type of physical damage, they are more likely to stagger from receiving damage in, in total. If they're affected by the puncture status, then they will deal less damage overall. And finally, if they are affected with slash status, then they will start to bleed and take damage over time to their health specifically. In total, there are 13 different damage types in the game that all do certain things when an enemy is affected by their status. And because there is so many, I am not going to be going over them in this video today. That's probably going to be in the mods video, though I don't know how much depth I'll cover it in. It is a lot. All right, moving away from weapons, let's take a look at your Parazon, the little hidden blade thing that you can hack not only computers, but people as well. So for the most part, this thing is merely just utility. There, there are some end game things that it's really important for, but you don't have to worry about that yet. So I'm just gonna keep this simple. Most of the mods you can put in this thing are for hacking and increasing your movement speed after a finisher. And after 400 plus hours of Warframe, I've only ever gotten three mods for my Parazon. So it's, it's nothing really to worry about right now. Next, we have companions. Now I won't go over every single companion and everything like that because this video is already long enough as it is, but this is where you can have your pets accompany you into battle, whether they be of the robotic or furry variety, and also where some of your quality of life functions come into play. 
Some companions are specifically built to help you in combat, and others are made to make your life easier. There are some who carry ammo for you and make it so that you don't have to always step directly on an item to pick it up. And there are ones that highlight items through walls or on your map, so in case you're looking to open a few containers, they're easier to find. And some who can just straight up find items for you where there are no items to be found. They'll just straight up give you and only you this certain rare material. Of course, just like everything else in this game, your companions are fully customizable. From colors and fur patterns to face plates and little wing attachments, you can fully make your companion any way you want to. Finally, we have your gear wheel. This wheel you can access at any time on any mission and you can take out the gear that you have brought with you. This gear can restore your health, restore your ammo, your energy, and all manner of different things. This includes also utility items as well, like a hoverboard and tools for fishing, mining, and trapping in, you know, open world areas like Orvalis and the Plains of Eidolon. Below your gear wheel is your emote wheel, and I'm pretty sure I don't have to explain to you how that works, so I'm just going to skip over it. You can have whatever emotes you want. The final thing that I want to touch on before this video is over. You might see either during this video or doing your own research or playing the game already or what have you that Warframes and weapons have different types of versions of themselves that you can get. The most common of these are Prime versions. While Warframes only come in normal or Prime variety, weapons don't always follow this. But it would be fair to say that the Prime version of anything is almost always the superior version of it. Primes usually do more damage, have additional polarizations, and just are overall better than their normal counterparts. Now, not every frame or weapon has a prime version. Some won't ever get a prime, while others will just take a while. Like as an example, Yorelli being the most recent frame to be released might take somewhere around three or more years before we see a Yorelli prime frame. It's safe to say, though, that if you have a prime version of almost anything, it's going to be a safe investment for you to get into because most likely that's the best version of the item that you're ever going to get. So as an example, if you get gifted a Wukong Prime like I did early in the game, don't be afraid to make that frame your main one for a while. Do some of your own research, though, and you'll see that there are hundreds of different items there with all with different variations. I know this video ran a little long and it ran a little off the rails and honestly, in order for me to tell you everything that I want to, that's what's going to happen. It's, it's just going to, I'm sorry. The next video in this guide is going to be 100% about mods though. And that might go even longer and more off the rails than this. I have no idea, but that is going to be it for this video. It's already long enough. Please be sure if you like the video to leave a like, and if you want to see more, make sure you subscribe to the channel. If you have any questions that I might be able to answer, make sure you leave them down in the comments below, because believe me, I'm more than willing to try and answer questions as much as I possibly can. Thank you all for watching so much. I really do appreciate it. I will see you all next time. Remember, keep your heads up and be kind to each other. Bye now.